In a world where samples are plentiful and the universe of sound design is vast and never-ending, nevertheless, it's good to know how to record your own drum samples. Creating your own samples can give you a signature sound and differentiate your music. In this video, we'll show you how to record bass and snare drums for the purpose of making individual drum samples. And in a second video, we'll show you how to process those samples into production-ready drum hits. So let's get started. Starting off, we're going to be recording a vintage drum set, a Gretsch kit from the 1950s to be exact. Although we have this set, complete with a kick, snare, toms, and a variety of cymbals, we're just going to be focusing on the kick and snare today. We can then sample the rest of the drum kit later using the same principles we're going to be explaining here today. Our recording setup is both powerful and portable. We have a Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II as our audio recorder. The recorder is set to 32-bit float and 48 hertz for a sample rate in broadcast wave format. This gives us a large dynamic range and crystal clear audio. We also have the iOS Wingman app synced to the Mix Pre so that we can have a convenient screen to monitor our levels. And we also have a Korg Nano Control 2 MIDI controller connected via USB to the Mix Pre. This gives us quick access to common controls without having to menu dive. Last but not least, we need some microphones. And naturally, we've gathered a selection of microphones for our audio setup. And the mics are the Shure Beta 52A, the Shure SM57, the Sennheiser E609, the Octava MK319, and the Electra Voice RE20. We will begin with the bass drum. Here we have a 20 inch Gretsch bass drum to record. We will use the Shure Beta 52A and place it in the sound hole of the drum. If we place the mic close to the drum head, we can capture more of the transient. We can then capture more of the body of the bass drum note using the Electra Voice RE20, which we'll route to a second channel. We place a mic a few inches away from the drum head, about the center of the drum. In terms of mic placement, we will experiment with mic locations to capture a variety of sounds, and using multiple mics will give us flexibility during processing. Our last mic is a mic that we will run over the center of the drum kit about six feet off the ground. This is the Cascade X15 stereo ribbon mic. With this mic, we'll have an overall coverage of our kit, and we'll run this mic into two channels on our Mix Pre audio recorder. It helps to have somebody play the drums so you can concentrate on recording. There is a bit of a trial and error process to getting a worthy sound. Adjust mic placement and gain until we're peaking between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. With the 32-bit float recording, we're less concerned about clipping, but it is still good practice to keep an eye on your levels, especially if you're recording at 16 or 24-bit. We'll play our bass drum so that there's enough time for it to resonate between each note. When ready, let's record several drum notes. Now, we can adjust everything and repeat. We can then repeat the process as many times as we'd like to ensure that we have plenty of recorded material to work with later. In fact, let's say that this process is all about experimenting and trying things until you get something that sounds good. And if it sounds good, then that's all that matters. All right, we have another kick drum available to us, so let's record that one also. We believe this to be a 22-inch Pearl import. Nonetheless, it should be good enough for us to record some drum notes. Let's set it up similar to the first drum. Again, we're going to use a Shure Beta 52A within the sound hole. And we're going to use the RE20 mic on the drum head here as well. We'll dial in the gain and mic positions, and then we can record a few takes. We can adjust the mic positions and repeat. Now let's record some snare drums. Our first snare is a Pearl Maple Shell 5x14. Snare drums can also benefit from using multiple mics to record different areas of the drum. Let's start with the Sennheiser E609. We can move it around the top, side, and bottom of the drum to select a good place for it. It sounds good on top, so we'll rig it there. We'll use a Shure SM57 to mic the bottom of the snare. And we'll place an Octava MK319 also on the top of the snare. And lastly, we still have our Cascade X15 overhead for a total of four channels on our audio recorder, plus two more channels for mix down. After we adjust our gain, we can record several takes. And we can use a cloth to dampen the snare for a shorter note. And we can record several more takes to get plenty of material to work with. 
Let's switch snares and record this beautiful cherry and babenga pork pie 7x14 US made snare drum. We'll leave our mics as is and try several takes. Again, we'll use a cloth and record several more takes. We can also use gaffer tape or moon gels to dampen the resonance of the drum. Okay, we have one last drum to sample. We have a vintage 1960s Singerland 5x14 chrome over brass snare drum. We'll keep the mics as is and record several takes. Again, we can use a cloth and other means to dampen our drum for a variety of sounds. All right, let's take a big step back. By now, a question may be on your mind. Do we need all this gear to record drum samples? In short, no. If we have a decent handheld recorder, we can simply use that. Here we have a Tascam DR100 Mark II, which has integrated microphones. And we can quickly sample some instruments at our disposal, like this tambourine. We have this recorder set to 24-bit 48 hertz, and we're using the unidirectional stereo condenser mics on top. Our gain is set to medium and our limiter is on. We can connect some headphones and test our levels. Adjust the gain so it's not clipping. We suggest between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. When ready, record a few takes. And what if we don't have an audio recorder? You can always use your phone. We have an iPhone here and we'll use the native Voice Memos app to record this shaker. We have adjusted the settings on the Voice Memos app to record in lossless format. When ready, we can record a few takes. One last note on gear. We recommend using the best gear you have access to. The better the gear, the better your recordings will be. But don't worry about having the latest fancy gear. Just use what you have. The principles explained here can be applied to most gear. Now that we have several recordings for each of these drums, we have enough material to work with, and we can process this in a number of different ways. However, that will be for another video, so be on the lookout for that video where we'll explain and walk you through how to edit and process these recordings into beat-ready samples. Until then, thanks so much for checking out this video. Please like and subscribe if you learned something. We appreciate your support. Thanks.